one after a 10 year pause. Um, okay. All right, sorry. Now known as the ITI freight train or economic cooperation organization train, the first train left Islamabad, entered the Iranian city of Zaidan on December 26th, and finally reached its final destination, Istanbul, on January 4th, 2022, hence covering three countries in just 13 days. Now the ITI train was envisaged um, in Vision 2025 of the ECO, which suggests an increased degree of trade amongst interregional countries. Uh, the ITI train is an initiative towards regional economic integration, which provides countries with alternate routes, um, and it helps create economic interdependence as well as reducing the chances of irritants between them. Now the ITI brings with it immense opportunities for all three countries, and understandably so, as it opens doors for fast-paced fast uh, trade between these three countries and beyond. For example, Turkey enjoys superior technology and is intertwined with Europe. Iran has a large energy resource depository. And of course, Pakistan not only has abundant labor, but can also prove to be a potential gateway. Now for Pakistan alone, the ITI train envisages earnings of up to 32 million per year, a potential which can be doubled if the ITI is connected to other railway stations within Pakistan to facilitate the transport of goods uh, to Turkey, Europe, and of course, beyond. Now, while there is no doubt that the potential and the scope of the ITI initiative, which of course includes also the road, um, is certainly encouraging. I think it is important to note that such initiatives must be sustainable and they need to be followed up by the governments of all three countries in order to ensure a timely redressal of any hurdles or irritants that may come in the way such as the technical and the administrative hiccups that did lead to a 10 year pause. Therefore, the aim should be to focus on making the project not only sustainable, but I think a role model for other regional connectivity initiatives. Now with these few uh, words of introduction on the initiative itself, we um, intend to learn from the other, you know, esteemed panelists who know far more about this initiative. But before doing so, I would like to hand over the floor now to Ambassador Ezaz M. Chaudhary, who's the Director General, Institute of Strategic Studies, for his welcome remarks. Ambassador Chaudhary. Thank you. Thank you, Amina. And uh, thank you for uh, organizing this um, important uh, event. Uh, my sense is that uh, uh, the audience and the participants would be able to gather from uh, this as well as a host of other programs that this institute is now launching uh, are all in the realm of geoeconomics, um, which is a central element of the new national security policy that Pakistan has promulgated, which rests on the tripod of traditional security, economic security, and human security. So uh, most of uh, the programs of the Institute of Studies, Studies, all the centers that we have are trying to, uh, 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 trying to convene events uh, such as uh, this one. This certainly is a good step. It's, uh, uh, I know that this train link was there for a long, long time. In fact, when I was posted in the in, in ECO secretariat uh, during the 90s. I remember when I got transferred back to Islamabad, uh, my luggage came via this train. Uh, it was loaded in Zahedan and I received it in Islamabad. So it was working at that time. But then there were some issues which uh, cropped up because of law and order in Balochistan and elsewhere. There was also a trouble of the gauge. The Pakistan uses broad gauge and, and Iran uses uh, uh, narrow gauge. Uh, but there are ways to resolve that problem. So uh, I'm glad that this has happened. Uh, two such freight trains have moved. Uh, I do hope that a mechanism will be found to make it more regular. And I'm glad that such um, uh, knowledgeable people are participating in this. Uh, let's 
first and foremost by Ambassador Cyrus Sajjad Kazi, our ambassador in Turkey. And I understand uh, Ali Ansar Zaidi is representing the ambassador in Tehran. Uh, and Ali Ansar Zaidi has, uh, and I have also worked together, uh, and I'm, I have very fond memories of that time. And then we have, of course, other speakers uh, who will be sharing their thoughts. So once again, I'm very happy. Thank you all for sparing your time. And uh, uh, Amina Khan, well done for organizing this. I keenly look forward to hearing the views of all other speakers. Back to you, Amina. Thank you, Ambassador Chaudhary. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, just before we begin, um, just to the speakers, thank you once again for joining us. And uh, because we have such a, a long list of speakers, um, I would request all of you to keep your uh, comments a little short, and then we can, you know, obviously expand uh, on your views in the question and answer session. So without further ado, let me begin by um, asking uh, Ambassador Cyrus Sajad Kazi for his views uh, on uh, the initiative. Sir, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Amina, for giving me this opportunity, Ambassador Azasa, for inviting me to this uh, discussion on a very important issue. Uh, to begin with, unfortunately, due to some confluence of scheduling circumstances, I was not in Turkey when the first train arrived uh, on this side of the destination, uh, on this side of the journey in uh, late December. But it is one of the more important uh, initiatives that I have seen during my tenure here between Pakistan and Turkey, a courtesy of uh, the ECO and our uh, friendly and brotherly country, Iran. And three trains have already now uh, arrived. There are a number, uh, and it augurs well for the consistent message that Pakistan and Pakistan's leadership has been giving on account of promoting Pakistan's central location in the region uh, and promoting connectivity, uh, enhancing stakes between the various countries in the region in a manner in which all come out winners. So uh, without further ado, I have a short prepared statement. I would just like to just delve into it. The Islamabad, Iran, Istanbul cargo train was the first uh, operationalized over uh, after a decade on account of uh, issues previously relating to uh, the commercial viability as well as the technical viability. However, the, as I said, the project previously could not take off. I think 11 trains uh, ran uh, in the last series of such activity, and that was about 10 years ago. What we see now is that, uh, as I have said, that ever since our government now came in, the new government that came into Pakistan, uh, into office in 2018, it has been focusing on strengthening economic connectivity with the regional countries, reviving old trade routes, and finding new opportunities, uh, creating win-win situations for everybody. In this context, efforts were, of course, initiated to, to revive uh, the ITI train route because it already existed. It had just fallen into dormancy. And here I must pay compliments to the ECO Secretariat, Mr. Akbar Khudai and his other team members who were instrumental uh, in guiding and facilitating discussions among the ECO members on this project. Finally, on 21st October 2021, the first ITI train started its journey from Islamabad and took 13 days to travel around 6,000 kilometers to reach Ankara, where a dignified ceremony, which unfortunately I had to miss, was held to mark this important milestone. After a few days, the second and then the third trains also commenced their journeys and reached Istanbul. This first train was a set of a chain reaction we are now looking forward to regular operations on this trade route. The significance of these developments cannot be overstated. It not only enhances regional connectivity, but also contributes towards the promotion of economic and commercial activities in the ECO region. And by the way, also its uh, ancillary beneficiary would be the D8 since all three countries are also members of the D8. And D8 is premised on promoting cooperation among its member states. It significantly reduces, I mean, the train uh, significantly reduces the cost for transportation and brings the time of transit down to 12 to 13 days from 
goods for goods to start from istanbul from islamabad to istanbul just by way of comparison transportation of freight through sea from islamabad to istanbul takes anywhere between 5 and 6 weeks the iti cargo train would offer pakistan the opportunity to further increase our exports and establish connections with international markets including europe it would also provide turkey with a bridge between european and the asian markets this will also contribute towards bringing the people of the region closer however in order to fully exploit this opportunity we must also make efforts to address obstacles along the way currently the iti train is being used to bring freight from pakistan to turkey and goes back empty this is not economically desirable or possibly in the long term feasible we are now reaching out to our turkish business communities and companies to consider using uh, their train uh, on the way uh, so that it shouldn't go back empty and bring cargo from turkey to pakistan also the three countries pakistan iran and turkey must also work closely to continue harmonizing the standards of transport and introducing further efficiencies in the route these steps would make the iti train more economically as well as technically and engineering wise feasible also i might just mention also in october 2021 we witnessed another uh, event related to promoting connectivity among natural partners geographical partners and this was the arrival in uh, in turkey of two nlc trucks that had started their journey in karachi and arrived here after uh, again about two weeks in transit despite excellent political relations we however realized that the countries in the eco region could still not uh, could still benefit from further harmonization and making the journey from one country to the other through another path through iran more seamless and less challenging however uh, the journey served as a good illustration of the potential as well as what all three of us all three countries need to do to ad, uh, advance this second leg of connectivity as well of course the aim is to position pakistan as an economic hub and a melting pot for positive regional and global interests centered on economic activity and build interconnected pillars of connectivity development of economic bases as part of the development strategy and also as a by product promote peace in the region giving each other a stake in each other everybody's stability of course leads to peace and prosperity both i would like to thank the officials and all those experts from the three countries turkey iran and pakistan as well as the eco secretariat who worked tirelessly together to realize this dream of resumption of the iti cargo train after almost a decade i commend the designated freight forwarding agencies harun brothers were here with us for a good two weeks plus they worked very hard to promote business coming from pakistan and to drum up some business going back from turkey we as an as the embassy of pakistan are totally at the disposal of all such entities and enterprises harun brothers and other uh, agents both sides that they need any assistance from us for ensuring that this train which we of of which we have now seen three instances becomes a regular means of transport of commerce between pakistan and turkey and also iran it there is a branch of uh, of course going up to azerbaijan also that also needs to be realized and i'm confident that we will hear only good news about it in the future thank you very much for giving me this opportunity thank you <clears throat> ambassador kazi um i would now like to request uh, ambassador mashallah shakiri a uh, former ambassador of the islamic republic of iran to pakistan for his remarks ambassador shakiri you need to unmute yourself i i'm afraid we can't hear you you have to unmute yourself
if you could either type in the chat box because we can't hear you. Maybe if you take five minutes, I'll uh, ask the next speaker and then we can come back to you. Okay, right. Uh, do we have with us, um, has he joined us? Um, yes, we have uh, remarks by um, Ali Ansar Zaidi. Can you hear us? Sure. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. All right, great. Then you can take the floor. Okay, thank you so much. Salam, everyone. And special regards to Ambassador Azaz. Uh, as he mentioned, he was one of my first bosses at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, in 2007. He was the DG for South Asia, and I joined as a uh, uh, desk officer for India. So, sir, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, as he said, uh, I'm representing Ambassador of Pakistan in Iran, uh, Excellency Rahim Ayat Qureshi. He's out of Tehran, unfortunately. He's traveling somewhere. So I'll be representing him. Uh, Briefly, I would try to contextualize my remarks um, from three perspectives. The first is the historical perspective. Uh, the second is uh, Iran-Pakistan bilateral perspective. And the third is the government policy perspective, which I would say. So historically, if we see this region, which comprises Pakistan, Iran, and the adjoining areas, they have always served as connectors, so to say, for the entire region. The Pakistani cities of Lahore, Peshawar, Sialkot, Bhawalpur, you know, they were always have been dry ports and they used to have uh, similar connections with the, the other cities in the region. So uh, we, it provides with this uh, strong basis uh, to us. I fondly recall uh, in 2016, uh, there is this British historian, Mr. Peter Frankopan. He was in Oxford University. I was fortunate to be there and he delivered a fascinating lecture. And he said, uh, you know, because he has written two books, The Silk Roads and The New Silk Road. And he said that this connectivity in the region has always been there. The only thing different this time is the speed of this connectivity. So we have this historical continuity for this regional connectivity. The second perspective is the Pakistan-Iran bilateral relations because we are sitting here in Tehran representing Pakistan. Uh, you know, from, uh, Ambassador Azaz knows more, much more than me about Iran and our relationship. Uh, for Pakistan, Iran is a brotherly neighbor. We have strong religious, historical, linguistic, cultural linkages and ties. And we have this more than 900 kilometers long border. And the people live on both sides of the border, which is uh, Balochistan from Pakistan side and Sistan of Balochistan from the Iran side. They have deep rooted familial commercial ties. So uh, this is a very important interconnected, interlinked relationship that provides us with this strong basis of connectivity with each other. The third perspective, as uh, I would like to mention, is the government policy perspective. Uh, Ambassador uh, has asked, uh, hinted towards this, mentioned it. Ambassador Cyrus also said about it. And that is the, the new policy of Prime Minister uh, Imran Khan's vision of um, regional connectivity and economic diplomacy. You know, we have been, we are trying to reorient from geostrategic to geoeconomics. And at the same time in Iran, uh, there is a new government of President Raisi. And President Raisi's focus has also been on neighborhood. Uh, and in our all our recent interactions, they have particularly mentioned Pakistan, you know, as, as one of the, the focus areas of their relationship. So uh, fortunately, Prime Minister Imran Khan's vision of regional connectivity gels very well with President Raisi's focus on enhancing relations with the neighboring countries. So, and with Iran, we are also working side by side on materializing many initiatives, uh, connectivity initiatives bilaterally and on the regional level. Uh, so if we look at these recent initiatives, this resumption of uh, Islamabad, Tehran, Istanbul train, or as Ambassador Cyrus mentioned about uh, the trucks going through, you know, uh, Side by side, this initiative uh, on 5th of October, four trucks uh, from Pakistan, two went to Turkey via Iran, and two went to Azerbaijan via Iran uh, using this international road transportation regime, TIR convention. Um, so uh, you can see that a lot of a lot is happening there. And in all of these initiatives, Iran has a central role, it's as a transit hub. So to conclude, uh, I would say that um, it's a very good initiative, very good development. But what we need to do is, as Ambassador Cyrus said, is that this uh, traffic should be two-way. 
become mutually beneficial for entire region. And we are here uh, in Embassy of Pakistan in Tehran for our colleagues in ECO Secretariat, our colleagues in the Ministry of Railways, uh, trade forwarders, whatever uh, help they need, we are always here to facilitate them. Thank you, uh, thank you so much, sir, Ambassador Azaz. Thank you, Mr. Zaidi. Uh, Ambassador, Mashallah, can you hear us now? Yeah, I hear you. Do you hear me? Yes, we can. You have the floor, sir. Yes, thank you, madam, uh, for providing me the chance now. Uh, I really enjoyed the deliberation by other speakers, Ambassador Cyrus, uh, Mr. Ansar Zaidi, and Mr. Uh, uh, Choudhury Sahib. Uh, let me start my uh, uh, deliberation with a saying with uh, one of the entrepreneurs, uh, Mr. Qadir, Mr. Iqbal Qadir from Bangladesh. He says, connectivity is productivity, whether it is in a modern office or an underdeveloped village. Uh, I being an Iranian, uh, I still remember the story of the story narrated by many business people and the voyagers who have traveled inland Iran to reach the railway station in Zahedan, once called Duzdab. They aim to get uh, on board a uh, passenger cargo train, which used to depart regularly a few times a week from Zahedan to Quetta. The train has been a uh, regularly scheduled one, which travels up and down several times a week. In those days, there was no efficient rail network inside Iran. The rail route, Zahedan Quetta was Iran's most efficient and the most regular external rail connection. Few days ago, just few days ago, while talking to one of the travelers of the time, he could recollect the period when the voyagers used to get on board the trains to Karachi, to Lahore, and even as deep as to cities like New Delhi and Bombay. In those old days, the rail network of Iran was not extensive as of today and the external connection was limited to the existing border with Pakistan. Nevertheless, the exchange of passengers and cargo in this route was substantial. In addition, I must mention about regular train, which, was, which used to travel to Turkey's Istanbul and one twice a week, having each on board about 350 passengers until recently. However, that service is discontinued due to increasing stringent pandemic prevention regulations. Today, the equations have changed remarkably. The important factors today is infrastructure developments and the sort of transportation capacity in the region. Connection of the railways of the countries in the region has created a bright business landscape for the traders in and out of the borders. Through the good offices of ECO Secretariat, the recently launched ITI freight train once again brings the ray of hope from the go good olden days. By virtue of a seamless an efficient network of rail. Pakistan is connected to Europe via Turkey. While I quote some observers, the railway line has great potential. Initially, it took a train 15 days to make the 6,500 kilometer journey. And this was eventually reduced to 11 and a half days. The train can carry 20 and 40 feet rail cars. The route has been recognized as an international corridor by the United Nations. It is foreseen that the railway 
not only connect these three countries, but also form a link between Europe and Asia. From Istanbul, there are good connections to Europe and with the use of the Marmara undersea railway tunnel, the delivery could be even faster. Iran's connectedness to the important neighbors, Pakistan and Turkey, gives a different meaning to the regional trade. 14,000 kilometers of existing rail network plus about 10,000 kilometers of rail project under implementation or study provides, three, three, provides a remarkable room for trade connection to Iraq, Afghanistan, Azerbaijan and Turkmenistan may give further weightage to the regional route. If I take the liberty here and suggest the extension of the rail network of Pakistan to China's border and invite the contribution of China to, to strengthen the productivity and operability of this regional network, China's Western Xinjiang would be connected to Europe via these three countries. Here now, the dear audience, I deem it appropriate to have a look at some impediments in this route of ITI. The Quetta Zahedan Rail Route has been designed in 1902. Uh, 120 years ago, at the time of British India, and completed and inaugurated in 1922, a century ago. Therefore, it requires a goodly plan and resources for refurbishment of the track. In view of the misalignment of the gauge width with the standard width of Iran's and Turkey's rail, the renewation of this corridor in conjunction with normalizing the gauge would save us the considerable time for transshipment at Zaydan station. Iranian relevant authorities are ready to do the job on Iran's side. Further, at the border of Iran and Turkey, at the entrance of at the entrance point in Turkey's border, there is a lake of Van. And the number of free ships to board the train may not be adequate once the demand for ITI increases. Therefore, that however is another issue which requires proper attention by Turkey authorities. At this juncture, Madam, I would like to mention and reiterate on two items. So the regularity and continuity of ITI is of great importance. Here also, I would like to join my other colleagues to thank all the relevant officials in Pakistan, Iran, and Turkey, as well as extend my admiration and gratitude to ECO Secretariat for their tireless job to make this dream realized. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Ambassador Shakri. And I think we all will agree that regularity and continuity um, is essential for this particular initiative. And let's hope that we don't see a repeat of the 10 year pause that we did see in the past. Um, I would now like to ask uh, Mr. Denise Istakbal to give us the Turkish perspective um, on this initiative. Uh, you have the floor. Yes, uh, Esseta, firstly, Esseta, we thank you for the invitation to the seminar. As we look uh, Turkish, Turkey uh, perspective, uh, we can say that the train, uh, the new train line will contribute to connection of the three countries and especially trade and people maybe we can say they improve the political uh, issues. And if you look at the 
total uh, foreign trade between the three countries, we can say in 2021, uh, uh, total trade volume between three countries is close to $7 billion. And, and also uh, more economic cooperation is need to be between Turkey and uh, Pakistan. Uh, we have a good relationship between Ka Pakistan and we need to improve our uh, economic relationship. Uh, for example, developing in political relations uh, benefits for trade and investments and we need to do that. And uh, this train line benefits for Turkey and the Pakistan relationship also. Train line reduce transportation costs cost between the three countries and and also faster uh, transportation of products and people will contribute to trade and the train line will also contribute to economic relations between Pakistan Turkey and also uh, Pakistan reach the European markets will be easier and we can say the same thing in Turkey for Asia perspective. And also Pakistan connect to $4 trillion uh, economic market and Turkey is connected to Asian markets for benefits from the more uh, welfare and other things. And also we can say the same thing for Iran uh, between uh, Asia and uh, Europe uh, Iran will connect to the more and more easier uh, um, global markets and also religion markets. It will strange in co connection of the three countries with the uh, benefits for the, the new Silk Road project also. Uh, and we can say that new trans transport uh, lines between neighboring countries seriously contribute to religion wealth uh, and maybe we can say that uh, like Germany, France, UK uh, can be example of this uh, because uh, they have some issues in the past and now uh, they trade, they uh, selling goods and the other things and benefits the welfare. It's a very important to uh, connection for countries to uh, trade and also other issues. Maybe we can focus on Turkish, uh, Turkey, Turkey perspective. We can say that these trend lines uh, very important for Pakistan and Turkey because we want to improve our trade, total trade volume. For example, uh, Turkey and Pakistan has very good relationship, but uh, if we look at the trade investment and the other e economic issues, we cannot say truly we improve our economic relationship. And these issues uh, needs to be fixed some uh, new, uh, new projects. And we can say that this trend line uh, benefits for Pakistan and Turkey. Uh, then uh, if we look at the history uh, between the countries, uh, if the connection improve, then uh, good relationship is continue and the uh, welfare uh, is uh, grow. We can say that for Turkey perspective. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Estekbal. Um, I would now like to hand over the floor to Mr. Akbar Khudai, who's a focal person for the ITI train at the ECO Secretariat. Uh, you have the floor, Mr. Khudai. I think you need to unmute yourself. Do you have my voice? Yes, we can. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Excellency uh, Ambassador Aizaz. Uh, 
Ahmed Chowdhury, Director General, uh, ISSI Honorable Ambassadors, uh, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, from Tehran, I say good, good morning and good afternoon uh, to the participants and assalamu alaikum. Uh, let me at the outset uh, express my gratitude for the organizers of this webinar for the valuable initiative and also extending invitation uh, to the ECL. I attach myself uh, to the positive approach and support that have been expressed by the distinguished uh, speakers towards this important ECO connectivity project. As you may know, the ITI uh, train project was initiated at the seventh ECO ministerial meeting on transport in 2008. And with uh, construction of the missing link of Kirman Zaheda in Iran, the three countries were connected by rail. The first milestone was realized on uh, 14th August 2009 through the test run of the ECO container train. The regular runs of the uh, container trains started on uh, started in October 2010, given the 30 percent reduced tariffs rates for the route. The total number of 14 commercial trains, eight from Turkey and six from Pakistan, have been dispatched since the start of the project till 2012. The operation of the ITI train was resumed in uh, 21st December 2021 with the dispatch of train, three trains so far from Pakistan to Turkey with coordination and support of the ECO Secretariat. The resumption of this train took almost 10 years after continuous follow-ups and rounds of negotiations. We take pride of being instrumental in this achievement. However, a lot needs to be done to convert the corridor into regular train. And for this purpose, we shall address the decades old bottlenecks and impediments. The ITI train not only benefits the region, but also has benefits, uh, but also benefits the Pakistani economy in particular. Distinguished participants, the main challenge for this important and strategic corridor is the sustainability challenge. Learning from our past experiences, we have to address the main elements of uh, sustainability of this corridor so that the movement of the train is ensured for the, for the future. As per studies conducted so far, there are a handful of opportunities envisaged for this, for this corridor ranging from economic to cultural and regional integrity to reap the benefits and strengthen this regional uh, initiative, certain steps have to be taken by the unruled countries that for years have been stressed in various meetings and occasions. I outline some of the major recommendations once more and hope that they will be taken seriously. First one is the reconstruction or rehabilitation of Taftan Kuwaita Railway and to the extent possible with standard gauge. So far, an economic feasibility study has already been conducted on rehabilitation of the segment by the railways of Pakistan and the cost estimate has already been done. The second recommendation is uh, further development and extension of the services to Europe, China, Russia, CIS countries, and Afghanistan. Like any other business activity, this project shall continue to expand to ensure its continuity by exploring new avenues and opportunities. The third recommendation for sustainability of this corridor is the regularization of the train services to attract customers and build trust 
For this purpose, strong and institutionalized part participation of non-state stakeholders shall be guaranteed. Without private sector participation and engagement, the train will not be sustained. Fourth, containerized shipment needs to be promoted for safety, security, insurance, and custom clearance reasons. Fifth, formulating commercialization and marketing plan. This important task also needs to be essentially conducted by the private stakeholders. Let me also bring to your attention the findings of the study on the rehabilitation and improvement of train from Koita to Tafta. After a thorough study of the proposed project of rehabilitation and improvement of track change from Koita to Tafta, conducted uh, under the uh, patronage of the Railway of Pakistan, following conclusions are drawn. First, the existing track is in deplorable condition and its survival is doubtful without wholesome revival. This section has almost uh, has lost almost all the passenger and freight traffic to rapidly improving highway infrastructure that is adjacent to the railway. The line cannot recapture the lost traffic unless improved to combat to. Uh, to combat the tough competition by the road sector. This uh, line passes through rich mineral resources in Pakistan that can, that, uh, can offer uh, 7,100 tons alone of daily traffic of cargo within Pakistan. The fifth finding is the uh, Pakiran train, which previously relied upon rail transport, is gone in the hands of road transport. This can easily be recaptured for long hauls to Karachi or upcountry. The sixth uh, finding is the improvement of track will give an impetus to mineral exploration, ex exploitation in the area of, uh, in the Pakistani territory and contributing to the growth of national GDP. This line uh, will, once completed, can link Pakistani uh, uh, Pakistani railway easily and with uh, lesser cost to the railways of Europe and the CIS countries easily. A another finding, this, uh, as, as already mentioned by Excellency Ambassador, this uh, line will, uh, has the capacity to improve uh, the friendly relations between the three brotherly countries and the founding members of ECO. So these are some of the findings of the studies has, that has already been conducted. And the final conclusion was that uh, unless uh, we reconstruct the segments from Taftan to Kuwaita and from uh, Taftan to Zahedan segment, uh, in a timely manner, there is no guarantee that this uh, operation will uh, continue uh, in the future. So the time is very limited for reconstruction and rehabilitation of the line. And unless we take some serious steps, then the same fate will, 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 is awaiting uh, this resumption of the train uh, which took us almost uh, uh, 10 years to be, to, to be done. So you know, from the perspective of ECO Secretariat, uh, I humbly would like to request uh, the Pakistani government
to uh, to uh, seriously consider uh, implementing rehabilitation or reconstruction of the rail from Taftan to uh, Kuwaita to inshallah ensure its sustainability and continuity. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Khuday. I think you've raised some very, very important points um, that really need to be focused on. Uh, we want this uh, initiative to continue. I would now like to um, ask uh, Mr. Nawab Zada Ferozman, who's the director of um, Harun Brothers Corporation, to uh, tell us about the initiative and also because they've done a lot of work um, regarding this. Um, and maybe if you could address some of the reasons that Mr. Khuday has raised regarding issues that stalled the process in the beginning. Um, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam, for giving me the floor. Uh, and uh, I really uh, appreciate uh, for giving me the floor today, Your Excellencies and participants over here. Uh, there are some uh, few major points I wanted to highlight over here. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to tell you about the introduction of my company. I'm the director of uh, Harun Brothers & Co., who have took this opportunity for the operations of this uh, ITA train from Islamabad to Istanbul. And uh, we are the officially nominated uh, freight forwarders on behalf of uh, Government of Pakistan and Pakistan Railways. And Pakistan Railways have given us this mandate to operationalize this uh, and manage the freight from Pakistan to Turkey. And also we are now in this condition to uh, facilitate the freight from Turkey to Pakistan. In the uh, in my recent uh, official visit to Turkey, uh, I we really actually missed uh, Ambassador Cyrus Ghazi's presence over there in um, uh, welcoming ceremony over there. And uh, but uh, I would like to thank you, my uh, embassy in Ankara, and uh, His Excellency uh, um, Consul General Mr. Bilal Pasha. Uh, really appreciated his uh, work over there and also our consular, Mr. Husham, who has done a tremendous effort of managing all the farm in the absence of his excellency. But uh, uh, very soon in my next visit, next month, I'll be visiting Turkey because uh, our embassy has done wonderful efforts in managing our meetings with the, uh, the Turkish big um, uh, company over there who are interested in moving their freight from uh, uh, Turkey to Pakistan. So we have likely, Alhamdulillah, is able to manage uh, uh, almost 100 containers from Turkey to Pakistan that I'm coming next month for signing of that agreement uh, with those uh, entities in Turkey. So this is uh, one of the achievements which we have done recently. Uh, now we have... Uh, you know that uh, three trains Harun Brothers and Co has conducted from Pakistan to Turkey, and fourth train and fifth train will be moving next week, inshallah, by Monday and Tuesday. We will be uh, moving this train. Uh, we are also be, uh, able to manage the freight from also, and uh, we have five destinations over. Uh, so five origin ports in Pakistan from where we can operate like near Peshawar, uh, Islamabad, um, Lahore, and Quetta. So anyone who is interested for moving of the freight from we are available for providing them the services. Uh, the, th uh, the most important thing that uh, uh, His Excellency Cyrus Sajad Kazi has mentioned about the, about this train is this that uh, for, uh, it is very much uh, time effective um, because uh, the first train which reached at Ankara Gar in Ankara was uh, uh, was reached in uh, 13 days uh, so it is uh, a record uh, in the uh, history of the uh, Pakistan railways um, also it is very cost effective uh, because if we uh, go on to the cost, um, uh, Pakistan, uh, we are providing 55% uh, cheaper than the sea freight and 45% cheaper than the um, uh, TIR mode, uh, mode of uh, uh, movement uh, from TIR. Uh, also, 
<clears throat> here i would like to mention that uh, for for our people because this is a strategic forum and uh, this point is very very relevant to this forum is this that uh, how we are managing the security in pakistan on this freight train uh, pakistan go government has uh, given the uh, protocols to this train uh, we are uh, this train has been moved through balochistan region with the three layers of security the first layer of security includes over uh, fc uh, the second layer of over security uh, conducted by the pakistan railways own security and the third layer uh, layer of security is been conducted by over company over own security is been involved till taftan border so there are three layers of security uh, involved for the uh, connection of this operation through balochistan region uh, as you know that at uh, you, um, uh, while connect with the Turkey, we are not only focusing Turkey as uh, as our destination, but we have uh, also a vision of the connectivity with the European Union. And recently, um, after uh, and recent in my visit after Turkey, I was uh, invited by the uh, government of Italy to uh, visit it, um, Italy side for the management and connectivity of this train with the European Union. Uh, we have recently met with the one of the best um, the railway uh, manufacturing and um, railway company in Europe, uh, Firavi Dello Stato, and uh, they have shown their interest of um, uh, connecting with us through uh, in Europe. Also, uh, because, uh, you know, before reaching Italy and before reaching Spain and other parts of Europe, uh, from Turkey, we have two main countries uh, which we have to cross are the Bulgaria and uh, Greece. And from uh, from Bulgaria and Greece, there are uh, uh, other connectivities like with Germany and from Germany rather we reach to the other parts like France and other parts of the European Union. So uh, in my first visit to the European Union, I, I'm able uh, now to talk with the Turkish railways, TJDD, which are very much uh, aggressive and they are ready to move freight from directly from Zahedan terminal to the other part of the European Union. So over people, over Pakistani customer who is sitting in Pakistan can able to move freight directly from Pakistan to European Union also. And soon we are launching this service also. Uh, the third achievement which we have done recently and have conducted in our national interest and we have given briefing to our ambassador in Uzbekistan. Recently, uh, I have arrived back from Uzbekistan to Pakistan uh, two days, uh, two three days earlier. Um, uh, we were in a delegation uh, with the Ministry of Commerce in Uzbekistan. Um, there, we have uh, we have organized a meeting with the Uzbekistan Railway. Now, after this ITI train, after the successful operation of ITI train. I am happily announcing another project that is ITT project, Islamabad, Tehran, Tashkent train project. What we are going to do is this, that we have already met with the high officials of the Uzbek railway and the Uzbek national freight forwarding company. And Alhamdulillah, the Uzbek freight forwarding company has signed an uh, MOU with us in uh, Uzbekistan. And uh, now we are also moving on the off-dock service in Uzbekistan with the five off-dock terminals in Uzbekistan. So uh, whatever the freight will be moving from Pakistan to uh, Uzbekistan and the CIS states, over off-dock services will be, um, uh, terminals will be present there for providing the, uh, the services for moving the freight further on to the other parts of the CIS states like um, uh, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, and also we are connecting very soon with Russia. So um, uh, by, by within two to three months, we will be completely operational, operationalizing this uh, rail route. All, almost we have done 70% of our homework. Just we are going to finalize some, uh, you can say freight rates, how we can make it much economical uh, for the, uh, for the, the uh, uh, trilateral side of the, uh, the uh, this perspective we are uh, looking forward, like uh, how it will be feasible for the Pakistan side, how it will be uh, feasible for the CIS states also, using the Iranian territory. Because uh, there was an element, uh, because this is the strategic forum, again, I would like to tell that uh, there is, a, 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 many of the excellencies are sitting here and they have a great research on this uh, regional connectivity. Actually, uh, this project is uh, from Pakistan side. It is purely under the vision of the Prime Minister 
Imran Khan for the regional connectivity and boosting up the economic activities in the region. So we are actually uh, uh, we were told to focus the uh, trade route of the Afghanistan, but due to the uh, non-stable uh, position in Afghanistan region and the uh, border situation at the Afghan border with Pakistan, we cannot conduct. Uh, uh, operations through Afghanistan right now, uh, but we are very much happy that our Iranian brothers are here. Uh, Mr. Akbar Khuda, he is very much, uh, he is a very good friend of mine, and uh, Mr. Abdullah from Iranian uh, Rasan Railways. We are we are conducting the, these operations with complete confidence and uh, collaboration. And ECO Secretariat had had stood very firm with us for the operationalizing of this uh, trade route. So what we are doing is this. We are using Iranian territory as the transit route because uh, there is one thing which is very, very important is this, that due to uh, Pakistan's having uh, position uh, on the uh, Iranian position, uh, due to the Iran position as the U.S. sanctions applies on the uh, transactions of the uh, banking transactions, we cannot do directly business with the Iranian uh, authorities. So uh, we can use the Iranian territory as the transit route for uh, for connecting with the world. So uh, I, I uh, we thank you for the Iranian authorities for providing us this opportunity to connecting with, with the world. Now, um, uh, with the Rasan Rail collaboration and Pakistan Railways collaboration, we are uh, opening this route with the CIS states and Iran is completely... So, uh, <clears throat> Sorry, uh, Iran is completely supporting us. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Khudai is taking lead uh, in the ECO Secretariat for providing us this opportunity. Uh, the most important thing which uh, all the participants has uh, emphasized upon this and uh, also int uh, intimated us, the uh, rehabilitation of the track ML3. Uh, first of all, I would like to come on this point and I would like to give you a very good news that uh, my company, Harun Brothers & Co., under the complete uh, leadership of our government of Pakistan, we have come on to the point that we are going to give a very good news when our prime minister will be visiting uh, Turkey very soon, in my uh, possibility, uh, because we are going to sign an FTA with uh, Turkey also. Uh, we are going to sign... An, uh, 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 an agreement of uh, foreign investment of uh, almost 450 million US dollars. Uh, already we have signed an NDA with the entity in Turkey and soon that company will be introduced uh, to His Excellency Cyrus Azad Kadisa. When I'll be visiting Turkey, we will introduce that company to you and uh, we will ask you to schedule that uh, uh, ceremony when our prime minister visit. So for the rehabilitation of this ML3 track from Koita section to uh, Taftan border, we are going to, inshallah, uh, uh, um, we will be participating in this and we will be bringing 450 million US dollars to Pakistan for the rehabilitation of this track. So we are very much ready for conducting and putting our national interest first for the um, uh, uh, for, for our people's benefit because once this uh, uh, foreign investment will come into Pakistan and we are going to start this project successfully in this region, our economy will be boosted and with the conversion of this track from uh, broad gauge to the standard gauge, we will be uh, we will be uh, bringing uh, uh, TJTD, the Turkish railway directly into Pakistan and Pakistan railway can directly goes into Turkey and from Turkey further on to the European Union, which is our next step. So these are some recent developments. We have very much seen that Madam for giving the floor for explanation of these all things. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you uh, so much, Mr. Feroz Khan, and good news for the 450 million that hopefully will be coming um, to this project. Now, um, our last speaker for today um, is Mr. Um, Ali Abdullahi, who's the head of the International Organization Group, International Affairs Department of Iranian Railways. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank you for inviting me to be a part of this uh, important webinar 
which is uh, giving the different aspect from this uh, important event uh, initiative, let's say, happened in our region, and that is the resumption of the ITI train. Uh, I also would like to express our greetings to all the distinguished uh, participants, uh, esteemed ambassadors, and all the uh, other, uh, you know, uh, participant. Just as part of Iranian Railways, uh, I would like to mention some points. Uh, I think that all the important features were highlighted, and uh, this route, the resumption of this train, uh, were dealt with from different uh, aspects. Uh, I would like to just point some important to highlight some uh, points which would be effective in the reliability of this line. Also, Mr. Khodai mentioned to the sustainability. Reliability is also, let's say, is important for this uh, corridor. Uh, well, we are very happy that the transport between the Pakistan and Iran at the first step is increasing. I would like to mention that we have also, during 2021, and also it is continuing right now, we have transported cargoes uh, from, uh, from Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan to uh, Pakistan. I mean, the transit cargoes, which uh, are mainly sulfur and fertilizer from Turkmenistan and uh, uh, Uzbekistan toward uh, Pakistan. The level of the transport between the two uh, countries is not at the satisfied level, but it is increasing. In 2021, in comparison with 2020, the amount of the transit between two uh, countries had 200% um, increase, and it is in a good, uh, you know, uh, level of increasing. Now we have also Iran Railways have some programs uh, for uh, uh, increasing the. Uh, speed of trains and also increasing the uh, amount of the transport between the two countries as well as on ITI route. For, as the uh, esteemed delegates mentioned that is in the construction of the Kuwaiti Taftan Railway or re rehabilitation of it is very important. You know that presently only Pakistani trains comes to Iran until, until Zahedan because of the broad gauge of Pakistan, which is 1676 uh, millimeters, but Iran rail line and Turkey rail line is standard line, and it is 1425, uh, sorry, 1435 millimeters. So uh, the Pakistani trains, which comes to until Zahedan from Mijava border, which is almost 98 kilometers, there is transshipment. And also the axle load of the Pakistan route is, is uh, if I'm not wrong, 16 tons, which is low. The, the axle load in Iran and Turkey is 22.5 tons. So the, the speed of trains in Pakistan is, is also low. So if this rail line will be constructed in a standard line, it will have some benefits. First of all, Iranian trains, also Turkish trains, uh, wagons, can go until the Pakistan uh, territories and with, with a high speed, you know, with, with, with more you know, speed. So the speed of the transport between on this character will increase. From other side, Ambassador Shakri also mentioned on the uh, passenger transport, which already was uh, from Zahedan to uh, uh, Kuwait. We have also some uh, requests for, uh, you know, transport of the for passenger transport, even tourist transport, uh, on bet between two countries. So the construction of Kuwait Taftan by the standard line will provide the way for having even regular passenger trains, even between uh, Pakistan and Turkey, and also to the some some. Uh, historical and uh, religious places such as Mashakom in Iran. The second uh, point which I would like to emphasize is continuation of this train to Europe. Uh, the esteemed speakers uh, told about the recent initiatives, especially Harun Brother uh, uh, told about their uh, recent uh, meeting with Europe. We are also working on it. We, we are also trying to connect some important forwarders, Europe to Pakistani forwarders. This is also important for us. Uh, 
From other side, we are also working with Turkey on the electronic data exchange, electronic data exchange between Iranian railways and the uh, Turkey railways, which also will increase the speed of the trains and also the uh, border crossing operation. Uh, so this uh, work also can be extended to the Pakistan railways in the near future. You know that now uh, it takes time. Uh, to, uh, we should receive the information of the train in advance so that the wagons to be prepared and all the necessary arrangements to be done. One of the problems which we have is that due to some uh, problems which is uh, in the Pakistan territory and mainly through the banks or customs that uh, the you know the time which is announced to Iranian railways that for the movement of train for is seven days but we need it to be announced two weeks ago uh, so that the preparation of the wagons uh, you know, especially Turkish wagons inside the network uh, to be made so that they come to Zahedan but electronic data exchange make all these uh, things uh, very uh, feasible and quicker so this is also one of the projects is in our agenda for increasing the speed of the trains and uh, another point is that also the use of uh, combined transport also we can enjoy on this uh, uh, corridor this corridor as also was mentioned can transport cargoes from South East of Asia and even from China so combined transport in, in cooperation with uh, the road section can be transported and uh, the, the cargoes could come to this uh, corridor and so be transport towards Europe. Uh, so, uh, in conclusion, I would like to mention that uh, this corridor uh, is in our priority and we are also doing our best for making this route more reliable for increasing the, uh, you know, the speed of trains and uh, uh, we also would like to request our colleagues in uh, Pakistan uh, to, for doing necessary works for uh, uh, making for continuation of this train. So far, three trains has come, and we are waiting for fourth and fifth uh, 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 trains. One important, which is also one matter which is important and should be considered, it is the promotion of this train, even in the European Union or other sectors of the world. For knowing this development in our region, we are also are working on it. So I hope that all our uh, uh, activities will lead to uh, for having a scheduled regular trains on this uh, corridor. And I would like to mention for last point that we are also working on the construction of the uh, Zahedan Mirjave uh, rail line by standard line. The feasibility study has already been prepared, and we hope that in the near future we can give good news for starting the operation of this line. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Abdullahi. Um, I believe due to shortage of time, we do have time for um, three questions um, that have been um, sent to us you know, through the chat box. But if there are questions amongst the panelists, please feel free to raise your hand. Otherwise, um, I'll take the floor and um, on behalf of those that have asked a question. One is for the Iranian side, and maybe uh, Ambassador Shakari could address this. Um, how is the ITI, um, what impediments do the sanctions on Iran uh, have on the ITI? Uh, sorry, you'll have to unmute. Okay, now you hear me. You are my voice. Uh, the, we, we were expecting the, some people or some corners to cast some doubt on the uh, operability of this uh, route. But my answer is very simple. And that is the proof of pudding is in eating of it. So when it has proven three times that it is operable, it is beneficial, it is to the interest of all the countries, even countries, extraterritorial countries, we can continue and no impediment from the, uh, what is called a sanction uh, can stop our resolution, our resolve and our resolute. So I see the bright side of the, uh, silver side of the uh, cloud. And uh, I feel that uh, there is no impediment as we are resolute to uh, have this operation. The only technical problems are there, not, not uh, political problems. 
Okay, thank you. Um, time and again, uh, all of the panelists have said that uh, sustainability is that one major issue regarding this particular initiative. But what is the reliability? Uh, because you know the initiative had been postponed for more than ten years. So what is the guarantee that this will continue? Uh, this is another question that has been raised and it's open for the panel. A anybody can answer. Or maybe I could have an answer from the Pakistani side, the Iranian side and the Turkish side. Well, if I want to say, Madam, as mm -hmm, uh, Mr. Nawab Zada Harun uh, mentioned, uh, Nawab Zada Firuz Khan uh, mentioned, um, I, I believe if we uh, get involved, the private sector to this and the freight forwarders from all the three countries join together, uh, make a consortium or whatever, like a partnership. Uh, there is no, there is no problem anyway. And uh, governors usually and railways are carriers, but the freight forwarders are the main uh, players in this uh, business. Ambassador Kazi, would you like to add to that? I think Ambassador Shakri has responded well. And in the final analysis, the feasibility and reliability, the reliability and sustainability will be determined by the private sector in the sense that if they see benefit in it, it will continue. If they don't see benefit in it, unfortunately, it will again go the way it went 10 years ago. But we see that uh, uh, Harun Brothers representative Faroz Khan Saab spoke very optimistically about it. Our job is to be the facilitators, provide all the facilitation and smooth all the wrinkles in terms of intergovernmental contacts. That's what we do. But final analysis, it is always the money. And if the gradient is good, the money will flow. Okay. Uh, before I give it to you, Feroz, would, um, Denise, would you like to add to this? No, thank you. Uh, other uh, parts of business, are, other person uh, said many things. Uh, I agree with that. Yes, Feroz. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam. Uh, here, I would like to mention some very key points. Um, and I really agreed upon His Excellency has just told that uh, we do, uh, we should have a consortium understand develop between the three countries freight forwarding companies together because um, let me tell you as you know very well that this uh, uh, railroad connectivity is passing through those regions which are very very strategical important in this region on on both sides uh, um, because this issue is being now told and been raised at this platform. So I would uh, like to tell that uh, we have gone into a very deep study when we, we were going to start this project. Before starting this project, we, I personally visited these places in uh, Balochistan region, Til Taftan border, and we have seen the complexities of uh, moving this train from these regions because it is very hard to, uh, because those regions are not very much developed and they have some uh, other uh, uh, pro type of problems of like uh, rehabilitation of track is not being done. But uh, uh, I'm, uh, Pakistan Railway has uh, approval of the prime. Uh, uh, basically, they initiated some funds for the rehabilitation of this track, for the uh, for the extra sports on this track, to, for this the movement of the train. But the most important thing is this: how this train can uh, stable and how can it will be moving with the continuity. For the continuity of this train, uh, there are two main things that are very important. The one thing is this: that do we have the uh, freight arranged for next two three years uh, completely? bilateral sites so the sustainability can be depend because freight is one thing very important if it is been present at pakistan side or it is been present at the turkey side 
this is depend upon the engagement of the trade um, uh, the second thing is this that how we can make this uh, uh, track or this uh, complete uh, uh, you can say the position in the region a uh, mazid sustainable for the movement of this uh, train so already i have told that uh, uh, but, but the uh, thing which i missed is this that uh, with those entities who are in their free to the turkey have already signed one one year agreements with our company for the continuity of this train and for the regularity of this train so those private entities working with us who are providing freight on this train have signed exclusive agreements for uh, continuity of uh, and pro provision of the freight complete one, uh, one uh, circle of the uh, uh, year and then again that uh, contracts will be renewed in the second year and the third year because we believe in the continuity of this train once this train is being completely regularized because right now this train is being conducted uh, this operations of this train is conducted uh, on the demand basis because uh, as as we receive the orders and the demands from the customers we complete the train and we are moving this train but we believe on the regularity and it will take one and a half month more for complete regularization of this train the other main element is this like we have taken this initiative i must really thank you thank I, for the ministry of foreign affairs who have an extremely wonderful um, uh, uh, cooperation for uh, uh, with us for organizing uh, some those uh, stages uh, which we can reach on to them and we can grab the opportunities and uh, and the entities which we are meeting in european side or in turkey side the, those entities need some uh, you can say security in the region for those security our government of pakistan is taking lead in providing them even we are ready to provide them these print guarantees we are ready to provide them complete security in the region for the infrastructure development we are ready to our government is completely supporting us the private entities to come into pakistan to invest in this infrastructure and that, and what we are designing the infrastructure in in the balochistan region for the movement of this train we are we have um, met and we are bringing one of the best architects and one of the best uh, companies uh, in pakistan they will be uh, designing up this infrastructure on this rail road that will be the same infrastructure which turkey has designed for the tjd the tjd the turkish uh, uh, train company has designed uh, their infrastructure the same infrastructure will be built in in these regions for the sustainability of this uh, uh, train route because we believe that in even in all around the world the train route is one of the best uh, transportation mode of uh, mode for the uh, transportation of the passengers either or for the transportation of so for the stability we are taking these two very major steps in uh, within one year we will complete this uh, progress and we will uh, we will uh, bring it into reality just we have brought this dead horse into a live uh, life lively thing this itia train project uh, as a, as a um, uh, success story for pakistan and for the bilateral sides thank you thank you uh, mr khudai Yes, uh, Amina. As I already mentioned in my uh, statement, uh, the main challenge uh, for the for the for this uh, corridor for this train is the challenge of sustainability. Uh, through my statement, I uh, underlined a few of the sustainability elements uh, factors which needs to be. Uh, addressed properly and timely i'm insisting on timely addressing this uh, this challenge and the reconstruction of the of the uh, line comes first uh, and then uh, further uh, development and extension of the service to europe uh, involvement of the private sector for Uh, ensuring freight uh, demand because the once the private sector is involved they will go they will look after ensuring the the the, the, the freight 
Uh, so this will lead to regularization of the train service. Once uh, cargo is insured, little by little, we can move on towards uh, regular uh, train movement. So as uh, mentioned by uh, Ambassador Shakari, with regard to uh, establishing a joint company or joint stock company, there is a study, uh, there's a concept paper uh, prepared uh, in the in a few years back with regard to establishment of a joint company between the private sectors of the three countries to operate on this corridor. We are ready to share the, the document to the interested bodies to uh, study that study, to, to, to go through that study for establishment of a joint company to uh, manage the corridor, including the investment uh, uh, on, on rehabilitation of the, of, the, uh, of the corridor, commercializing the corridor, uh, marketing the corridor, and uh, so on. Uh, so these are main elements of sustainability of the of the corridor, which uh, we are ready to help. We have. Uh, let me also uh, share with you that we have already conducted a comprehensive study with the help of the uh, an international consultant from the UNEC uh, for the for the whole corridor. There's a feasibility, economic feasibility study on the segment of uh, Taftan to uh, Kuwaita, and another feasibility study from Zahedan to uh, Mirjav uh, uh, border. So these are the, uh, the, the, the uh, studies that have been conducted by ECO uh, through international and national consultants of uh, within Pakistan and from, uh, from the UNEC. We are ready to uh, reshare these documents again to the member states. And I'm telling you that in all of these studies, the reconstruction or rehabilitation of the uh, segment from, uh, from uh, Kuwait to Zahedan, to, to Taftan and from uh, Zahedan to Mirjava is highly recommended. So one major element and a basic element for sustainability uh, is the reconstruction. And then the other elements uh, follows this uh, one major uh, basic one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for those remarks. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, um, this does bring us to the end of today's uh, webinar, which has really been interesting, and I think we've learned a lot. Uh, before we conclude, I would like to hand over the floor to uh, Ambassador Khalid Mahmood, who's the chairman, Board of Governors, ISSI, for his remarks, and I don't think he needs an introduction. Um, he has served extensively um, in the Middle East, and particularly in Iran, so we would like to hear from him, Ambassador Khalid Mahmood. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. First of all, my salam to all the participants in this webinar. Uh, I'm particularly happy to renew my contact uh, with uh, Ambassador, mashallah, Shakri, uh, Cyrus uh, Sajad Qazi, and Mr. Zahedi from uh, our mission in Tehran. <clears throat> See, I think, uh, there's no dearth of plans, programs of actions, strategies for economic development, for economic integration at the national and international level. What's more important is to have concrete projects and that this Islamabad, Tehran, Istanbul, Freight, train project is one such a useful example. Now we all know that uh, uh, due to the efforts of the ECO secretariat, this uh, train, uh, freight train was launched in 2009 
and it continued to service till 2011. But then there was a gap of about 10 years or so. And now this project has been again relaunched in December last year. What I see is that uh, no one can deny the benefits which will accrue to the countries, Pakistan, Iran, and Turkey, when this project uh, gets going on a regular basis. But I see that this is an opening to much wider opportunities from uh, Turkey, access to Europe through Marmara undersea rail tunnel, from Istanbul to Tashkent, to Istanbul to Xi'an. And as if we talk of Tehran, then Tehran to Turkmenistan, to Afghanistan, to Azerbaijan and onwards. And as regards from Islamabad, link with the BRI, CPAC project uh, to China. And we also have now a project and uh, active uh, study and Hello. implementation you know, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Uzbekistan railway project. So it means that when we have this connectivity, it will not be just confined to Pakistan, Iran, and Turkey. It will cover much wider areas. I think more, more important thing is to see what have been the roadblocks or uh, challenges in making all this uh, functional. Uh, of course, uh, uh, that has been rightly pointed out that uh, Quetta, Taftan uh, sector uh, is in need of uh, rehabilitation. I mean, we have their tracks uh, belonging to the British Raj period, you know. Uh, it has not been refurbished. And uh, so there is a need to uh, rehabilitate that uh, sector. Secondly, the problem of the different gauges, uh, uh, you know, broad gauge on Pakistan side and then uh, the standard gauge on the other sides, you know. So it requires a lot of effort, you know, to uh, transshipment on the border. Mm -hmm. I think that, that is also necessary to align these uh, uh, track uh, gauges. Then uh, people have not referred to it, but I think there is an issue of uh, security also, because these uh, train, these tracks, you know, pass through areas which uh, uh, are, uh, you know, prone to threats from uh, uh, terrorists or uh, uh, other external uh, inimical actors. So we have to ensure the security aspect uh, also. Uh, then it has been rightly pointed out that for uh, these uh, projects to sustain, you uh, need uh, sufficient cargo. And that is possible only if the business people community shows uh, 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 comes into play, you know. Uh, then uh, also, I think to com commercialization, I think one of the uh, way to commercialize it is to, to, as early as possible, to convert this facility also into passenger train. You know? Because if there's a passenger train along this route, uh, uh, I think a lot of people would, uh, uh, make use of it. So I am very sanguine uh, about uh, the future prospects of this very important uh, project. Uh, Mr. Shakri, of course, said that uh, sanctions uh, have, don't matter, but I think if, and we are hopeful that sanctions soon will soon be lifted and that will help in, uh, uh, you know, further uh, encouragement uh, to the private sector to sustain this uh, uh, project. Uh, I would like to just uh, 
close by saying that, uh, of course, uh, countries uh, develop, but uh, history tells us, economists tell us that countries develop more rapidly when the regions develop. And I think uh, uh, this train uh, project uh, uh, freight at the moment, but freight come passenger uh, train service uh, uh, will bring great benefit to the region and consequently to the economies uh, of the peoples of uh, and people of these uh, three countries. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ambassador Khalid Mahmood. Uh, well, um, this brings us to the end of today's uh, webinar. I would just like to quickly uh, express my gratitude once again to all the speakers, uh, particularly Ambassador Sajad Qazi, Ambassador Mashallah Shakri, uh, Mr. Ali Ansar Zaidi, uh, Mr. Dinis uh, Istikbal, uh, Mr. Ali Abdullahi, Mr. Akbar Khudai, and of course, uh, Mr. Feroz Khan for taking part in today's uh, webinar. And we hope uh, next year, the same time, we could have another webinar on this to see the progress that has been made on this freight train. So thank you once again, and uh, Asalaamu As Alaikum. Okay, Khudafiz, everyone. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.